my vlog playlist, there is an introduction to the vlog which explains my journey in regard to watching the paranormal and content on YouTube and becoming part of the debunking community. So please watch that one as it does explain how I got to the point where I am now. However, to reiterate, since finding Crow, Joe, Karen, Kenny, I feel like I'm finally in a space where I fit with regards to not just the paranormal, but also the unexplained and how I personally view the subject. The turning point for me, uh, deciding to start the vlogs and in turn just go ahead with the second channel, was a live stream by Kenny Biddle about a week ago. The topic for discussion was cryptids, specifically Bigfoot. As my interests go beyond ghosts and hauntings and include subjects like cryptids, I decided to watch live. Now, I prefer watching live streams live, even when they start at 1am, which this one did, so I can participate in the chat. However, most channels, if you don't normally look at live streams, do leave live streams up for rewatch. So if you miss, you can always catch up later. Now, Kenny Biddle is an essential part of the paranormal community. He doesn't just offer opinions, he does research, recreates techniques by fake ghost hunters, takes apart investigation equipment, builds it himself and looks for scientific ways to prove or disprove phenomena. He should have way more subscribers, so if you aren't subscribed to him already, I'll put a link in the description. Now this blog isn't specifically about that live stream in particular, but it's been initiated by that live stream. Basically, for me, it shows a genuine gap, a problem, a grey area when it comes to the unexplained. People have all sorts of beliefs with regard to the paranormal, from the complete believer who doesn't even want conclusive proof that ghosts are real, that Bigfoot lives in Canada or the Earth is flat, to the complete sceptic who doesn't believe any of it, even if a cup levitated in front of them and a ghost appeared out of thin air. You then have people who have had paranormal experience that they can't fully explain, um, so they believe that there is something out there. I am one of those people. And then there are those who are sceptics, but if you presented them with proof, they would be willing to believe that there is something to it. But this is where the problem starts to come in, and this is what I started thinking about during the live stream. I wrote down a note to myself which read, it's easy to state that something doesn't exist when it cannot be conclusively proved that it does. I genuinely hope we never get to the point where everything is explained. We need mystery in this world. It's part of the human condition to wonder what could be out there. Even if it's just keeping going with spooky stories around a campfire or these days on Reddit. OK, now this is the part where I'm waffling. I wrote the last bit down, which is probably why it sounded a bit stiff but I, I need to use train of thought now um here's my problem or my observation at the very least now you need to have some sort of open-mindedness when it comes to the unexplained um now most skeptics i know are very willing to believe in the paranormal they just want proof and I respect that. I really do. Um, but others are going to probably be shocked at what I'm about to say, because I do believe that there's a certain sense of um, instinct on humans' parts when something isn't quite right or is unusual um, or is something something other than the normal. I'm not going to go into all of my experiences now. I will document one or two of them. Um, in some cases, I could explain it. In other cases, I've absolutely not find any way whatsoever to explain it. But in the majority of the cases, it's been a case of, well, I thought it was something strange, but it could be explained. Now, just because something can be explained doesn't mean that's the reason for it. And that's my problem. For example, um, this isn't something I normally look at, to be honest. And it's probably not something I'm going to discuss, but it's the first example that came to mind um, to try and explain this point. Um, what's probably my strangest experience were could actually be called 
a type of premonition. I didn't know what the premonition was. I didn't know it was a premonition at the time. But something happened. I got this really strange feeling. And later in the day, something awful happened. I need to decide whether to even put that on the channel. But the thing is with that um, is it's not like I saw into the future. I didn't say, oh, this is going to happen today. I just had this really strange experience. Now, that could be a complete coincidence. But there's something in my instincts that tells me it wasn't. Um, and I know no other way to explain it. Can I scientifically prove that? No, I can't. Um, it can't be. But just because something can't be scientifically proven, or it can be scientifically proven, a bit like deja vu has an explanation, doesn't mean it is deja vu. And that's where the grey area in between the believer and the sceptic is never going to be resolved. Because unless you can actually grasp, grasp that somebody has an experience whether it's they think they've seen a ghost or they've seen a cryptid or, you know, they've had a premonition. It doesn't matter what it is. I just know from the quite a few experiences over my lifetime that I've had, there's some that I'm perfectly willing to say, oh, I can explain that. And it's always the first thing I'll do. I will always look for an explanation. But there are a handful of things that have happened that I can't explain. I'll never be able to explain. Science probably could never explain it, um, or if it can, doesn't mean it's the ex it's actually the explanation. So, I don't know, maybe it's a good thing that this grey area exists, because if everybody agreed on a process, well, we'll believe in ghosts if this happened and that happened and the other happened. I don't know, maybe that grey area is where the mystery sits. Um, maybe that grey area is why, you know, we will never fully understand, which I've already said, I don't want us to fully understand everything. Um, maybe that grey area is the mystery. It's the it's the unexplained. It's the part that makes us keep thinking. It's the part that makes people keep investigating and researching, whether it's debunking, whether it's explaining it scientifically, whether it's going out and trying to experience for themselves or whether it's uh, looking at the research and looking at, at data it doesn't matter um maybe striving to actually find some answers maybe maybe it's the maybe it's the journey of of, of finding out the truth that sounded really bloody trite but but you know what i'm saying um it's the investigation part that matters. And this is where a lot of channels fall down. There are some very, very good, genuine paranormal investigation channels out there um, in the minority, admittedly. But there are very, very good ones. And people think, oh, well, nothing's happening in these. Well, yeah, nothing's happening in these. I mean, I've just said... I've had a lifetime of experiences, but I don't have something happen every day or every week um, or even every month. I mean, I haven't had um, one for quite a while, actually. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm older. I've, I've had years to, to actually build up those experiences. Um, and I'm not going out every night in supposedly haunted places or reportedly haunted places and looking for the evidence this is just me living life now this isn't me saying well we shouldn't do the research we shouldn't do the investigating we shouldn't do um the scientific explanations of course we should that's kind of the point um you know work out what can be explained and then ponder the rest um it's actually why I think that the research side and the scientific side is so important. Um, and it's one of the reasons why uh, my next two vlogs are going to be on um, uh, Doof Doof Paranormal, who does amazing research uh, on the on the location she goes to. I mean, really in depth and the same with Joe Vitale, um, who I'll also be doing a video on. Um, 
I, since finding those two in particular, just seeing how much effort, it's not just about grabbing a camera and going into a haunted location. It's all the prep that goes in before. And when you uh, watch the vlog I do on on Karen, um, you'll see some of the things she says about that, which I'm, I'll leave until the vlog's up. But, um, you know, and looking at people like Henny Biddle and looking at at what you can actually dismiss, you know, um, what you can actually debunk. Debunking is so important, but it doesn't mean you can debunk everything. And the best people to entrust with that, if you're watching, if you're not the one, especially if you're not the one going out doing it, but even if you are, but if you're not the one going out doing it, Trust those channels more that are doing that, who are actually putting in all of the effort, even before they go. And then they're doing full research. They're not just going in for an hour or so. They're, I mean, Joe Vitali spends days um, sometimes in, in the locations he goes to. Um, uh, you know, hunters who spend at least hours um not just going in for five minutes and something happens straight away and, you know, there's a bro and a dude and, you know, oh, no, that's scary. You know, they're investigating properly. And sometimes they don't catch anything. They don't catch anything. And sometimes they do. Um, but investigating beforehand, the amount of effort that goes into the time in a location and then the editing time afterwards. Guys, you can tell the difference with the channels as to who's putting those hours in and who isn't. So the next time you're watching uh, a channel and you're sitting there and you think, I want to try and debunk this. Yes, look for the fishing wire. Look for the jump cuts. Look for the masks and the artefacting everything else, but also think about how much effort has actually gone into that particular episode. Um, now, sometimes it may mean you have to research it for yourself or find somebody who's who's analysed and has found out that the location where it isn't where it said it was or um, events that they've said had happened didn't happen at all in the house or they're using actors. Yeah, use the debunking community to help that. But also use your instincts. Look at the way it's been shot. Does it look as though they've literally picked up a camera, gone in, run around a bit and come out again? Has there been any, how much pre-production's gone into that? Um, how much time has it taken? How, you know, how many hours of footage have they had? If they've only gone in for two hours, it's not as much as somebody who's, who's going in there for seven, eight, nine hours overnight, several days. It's, it's nowhere near. So... Um, and I'm not saying that there aren't real investigators that maybe don't go in something for an hour or two. Sometimes it's all they can do. But you do build up a understanding of more of an understanding of when somebody's being genuine and when somebody's just you, you, you just start to suss it, even if you haven't already. You just um, do that. But on the flip side of that, the last thing I'm going to say is. Just because there are a lot of fakers out there doesn't mean everybody is. So hunt down, do your own hunt, hunt down the genuine channels. I mean, I'll be talking about them on, on here. Um, go into the debunking community. They have um, very strict codes about who they will um, uh, support as genuine. Um, they will put through recommendations, listen to them. Um and make your own mind up, you know, but, but stay in terms of the paranormal. You're not going to believe anything if you're a complete sceptic. Um, you're going to believe too much if you've got blind faith. Be in that grey area, be in that area of mystery. Um, you might find you enjoy it, 